This beautiful looking thing is the new Bentley Bator and it's the most powerful, most expensive and most exclusive coupe Bentley has ever made. They've even filled it with gold, which I'll try and remove bits of later in this video because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, wow. Let's start this video by talking about what exactly this car is. So it's based on a Continental GT, but it's been built by Bentley's bespoke Molina division. So those are the guys that do one-off projects and exclusive super luxurious vehicles like the Bacalar. And the name Batur actually comes from a volcanic lake in Indonesia. Now more on that in a bit. This car is actually the first project of Bentley's new design director. He comes from Audi and he actually did the Audi RS e-tron GT. His name's Andreas Mint and I've got to say mate, your new car looks pretty mint. Right, let's talk about the design of the Bator. Now at the front, it's got this huge protruding grille which sort of reminds me of a great white shark's mouth when it's biting. And you see these bits in here, the red bits and the design with all the triangles and stuff. Apparently that's a nod to the Bator volcanic lake. This bit is supposed to be the volcano and this bit underneath is its reflection in the lake. And I imagine the red bits are lava. There's more vents here, all of which are functional. In fact, the car has a very aggressive, like slightly sinister smiley face, doesn't it? Big thing to notice is the headlights, very different to other Bentley headlights, which are normally round. But this car actually hints at future Bentley EV and what that design could look like. Hmm. One thing though, this car, its body panels are all carbon fibre. You won't get that on the production EV, but then again, this is a very limited run, super exclusive car. Now the bonnet, that comes from the Bacalar. It's got the same spine down the middle and then two air vents there. But one key feature on this car, which I really, really like, is this strip which runs the length of the car. Now what that does is hide the shut line from the bonnet when you look at it from the side. Very clever. Is it going to bite me? At the side, you can see how that bonnet strip runs all the way to the back of this glass house. Looks nice. And something very interesting about the design of this car is rather than having creases here in the shoulder line, it's all smooth, very elegant. All the detailing actually happens down here. Now this strip is normally made out of carbon fiber, but if you want to, you can have it built out of sustainable materials, which is a bit more eco-friendly to make up for the fact that this is a W12. Anyhow, one of the things that is a little bit unusual on this car is that even though it's very bespoke, the door handle and the door mirror are taken straight from a Continental GT. The reason is that to create a door mirror, you have to go through this long homologation process. So they wanted to build this car really quickly. They turned it around from initial designs to the actual thing in a year, and that wouldn't have been possible if they had to create a bespoke door mirror. What is bespoke though? Alloy wheels, 22 inches, and they look lovely. Do you know what, from the side, it's a very, very stylish car. They Bentley describe it as looking like rest in peace, a, a dead person? Oh, a resting beast. My mistake. So like a lion or something just chilling out. It makes more sense. Around the back, there are some things that I absolutely love about the rear of this car. I like the curvature of it. I like the fact it's got really muscular haunches. I like these thin tail lights and the full titanium Akrapovich exhaust system and the exhaust surrounds are 3D printed from titanium wonderful. What I'm not so sure about though is this. The way this rear panel that holds the back window actually looks like it's a hatchback, but it's not. Apparently they've had to do that for production reasons. Maybe something to do with the huge expanse of carbon fibre bodywork here in order to get this shape. They had to do it separately. Then you have the boot section, which actually is just in this part here. Apparently it's a little bit smaller than on a Continental GT, which is about 350 litres. So I wonder how you're going to be able to get stuff in there. Bentley aren't letting us look in there, probably for that very reason. Then there's this spoiler here, which pops up. The thing that I'm really not sure about though, is this part here. So this big expanse, which apparently is color coded to match the spine down the side of the car, although it looks slightly darker. Sort of reminds me, you know when you have like a normal hatchback and the entry level spec has like the black plastic for the lower part of the bumper, then you have to pay extra or move up the range to get full body colored. Sort of like that, which is odd on such a car. Oh well. Overall, I really like the design of this car. In fact, it's one of the best looking cars I have seen in ages. I would give my right kidney, not my left one, my right one, I'm not so keen on that one, to be able to drive this car down the road. I mean, it would just turn so many heads. It's never gonna happen though, because 
price of one of these, two million pounds, which is the price of 11 Continental GTs. Also, only 18 will be made. They've already been sold. The lucky people are gonna get them sometime next year. Oh well. We can always dream. And if you like videos on dream cars such as this, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you won't miss a single upload. The interior design of the Bator is taken from the Continental GT, but material quality is on another level. The leather is just so sumptuous and gorgeous. And you can pick whether the leather comes from dead cows from either Italy or Scotland. Then there's Alcantara, actually it's not Alcantara, it's from another company, so I should just call it fake suede, but it feels gorgeous. And the stitching, attention to detail, and the contrasting of the stitching is just lovely. You get that on the seats as well, looks really cool. And the pattern stitch into the seats mimics that of the grill. You've got the Bentley logo embossed up there, more of that fake suede. Seats are great. And look, Bator on the seats themselves. Another thing I really like is the paint effect on the dash, the way it goes from dark black and then as you move to the door, it gets lighter. That pan sort of reminds me of the sunburst effect you get on Les Paul guitars. Really, really nice. And then if you're wondering what that sound wave is, that's not from a guitar. That's actually the signature waveform from the W12 engine. But really for me, the most exquisite material in this car is on the drive selector. This is made from 18 karat gold. It's absolutely lovely to just twist I think people are going to be driving this car along and constantly changing modes just to feel the weightiness of their drive select switch. You also get gold for the dead ahead marker on the steering wheel. That is lovely. Speaking of the steering wheel, the structure is based on the Continental GTs, but they've changed this bottom spoke, which makes it look and feel a bit more chunky. Now, other changes are the fact they've actually raised up this center console to make you feel more cocooned. As a result, they've had to change the air vents slightly, not only circular, but now they're a bit more like on the flying spur. Speaking of air vents, these are the organ stops. However, if you pay a bit extra, you can have these in 3D printed gold as well. The door design is slightly different than on the Continental as well. Like the shape of this panel here looks exquisite, feels exquisite, and I just love the gold. <laughs> it's so cool to see gold right ahead of you on the steering wheel. I'm gonna play with this a bit more as well. I wonder if it's easy to remove this. You see gold's currently trading about 50 pound per gram. What else costs 50 pound per gram? Anyway, I really like the fact there is a hallmark on here and on here as well. What there isn't on this car, back seats they've removed them instead you've got this shelf here which would be very handy for filling with luggage considering it's going to be harder to fit stuff in the boot on this compared to a normal continental gt maybe you'll be able to get some bespoke luggage for it i bet you probably will there's something a little bit sad about the battle and it's the fact that it'll be the last new bentley to feature the six liter w12 hand-built engine it's the end of the road for this beautiful beast what a shame they first introduced the six liter w12 in 2003 with the original continental gt however this new engine is 25 percent more efficient than the original w12 and it produces 40 percent more power in fact it's more powerful than the engine in the current continental gt speed so that car has 660 horsepower but here the engine produces 740 horsepower that makes it the most powerful bentley ever They've done that thanks to new air intake system, a new intercooler, new turbos, and an ECU remap. It also produces 1,000 newton meters of torque, which is 100 more than the GT Speed. And if you're wondering what this green wire is here, yeah, well, that's because this is a pre-production car. It's not the car that customers will get. And this, I think, is an earth wire because we've got it hooked up to an electrical system so the battery doesn't go flat while we're filming it. Bentley says the Bator will be quicker than the GT Speed. That can do 0-60 in 3.5 seconds, and it takes this long to do the quarter mile. I could estimate the performance if I knew this car's weight, but Bentley hasn't actually revealed it. It could be lighter than the GT Speed because its body panel's made out of carbon fiber, but all the goal could mean that it's heavier. Who knows? The Bator will get the carbon ceramic brake system from the GT Speed. So you'll have 440 millimeter discs up front gripped by 10 piston calipers, whereas at the rear you'll have 410 millimeter discs gripped by four piston calipers. However, the anoraks amongst you might notice is that these are iron brakes and not the carbon ceramics. Once again, that's because this is a pre-production car. The customer cars will have carbon ceramics. They'll also have this feature, look, the rotating B, so that when you're driving along, it is always the right way up. Also carried over from the GT Speed is the 8-speed dual-clutch automatic gearbox with launch control, rear limited slip differential, active anti-roll bars to stop the car leaning in the bends, and adaptive air suspension, which you can alter the stiffness of by turning. 
this dial. It's just an excuse for me to mess with this again. That's enough. So then, what's my final verdict on the Bentley Battle? Should you avoid it, consider it, shortlist it, or just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should just dream about the battle because that's the only way you're gonna experience one, I'm afraid. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know if you agree that this is one of the best looking cars ever in the comments below. Click on those windows there for some more videos or on that box there to go to CarWow to see how much your car is really worth. Just upload some photos, give a brief description and our dealers will bid on your car, simple and free.